depression is a pretty sensitive topic to be talking about, right? Especially suicide, because there's not really one answer to all their problems, you know, because it's multiple things happening to one person. And there's not, and you can't really answer that with one thing. So imagine my surprise when I found out that some people actually exploit other people trying to kill themselves for views. You know, and not just views, specifically for clout. You know, I fucking hate that word. You know, the C word, clout. So the video that I'm talking about specifically is this one, which was made by Touch the Light. Now, I'll get to that video in a minute. So who is this Touch the Light person? Well, if you were to ask me, I'd say he's pretty much the British version of Prank Invasion. But that's just my opinion. You know, to him, he thinks differently. He sees himself as a quote-unquote sarcastic person the other day and I was saying I want to make a few more serious videos on my channel because like I am quite serious sometimes and everyone just thinks I'm full of sarcastic amitis well I'm not you kind of are yeah I kind of am like I can't help myself but I am sarcastic and I can't help it I have a disease please help me this oh my god you poor little poor boy you have a sarcastic disease oh, oh. oh my god eh. 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 <laughs> you know what disease you got you got the I am a total piece of shit disease which is an actual subreddit, by the way, and that's where I saw you. That's who he is, and that's the disease he has for the rest of his life. It's a lifelong disease. Okay, there's no cure for that, so... Okay, good. We've established that he's a sarcastic person. We shouldn't trust anything that he says. Let's start talking about this reading my brother's suicide note video. So, as we said earlier, sarcasm. Right? He's not actually reading his brother's suicide note, and that person believe it or not, is not actually his brother. But don't tell him that. Are you gonna get closer to me or are you gonna act like you don't know me? Three, two, one, action! Do you wanna do my intro with me? Yes, of course. Hello, Hello everyone. everyone, how are you, are you doing? doing? My, my name is Kami and welcome, welcome back, back to my, to my channel. channel. So as you can see, I'm here with my good friend Jacob White and this is actually our first video while you have a YouTube channel. Yeah, we haven't done one in ages. Do you wanna shout yourself out because you literally are new to YouTube? Um, what will get me the most subscribers? Nothing. Anyway, uh, he has a YouTube channel now. If you wanna subscribe to him, feel free. I'll leave it in the description. I'm like a weird, edgy version of Kami. Yeah. A weird version of Kami. Yeah. Yeah. That's such a boss way to start a depressing video. You know, like, Yo, what's up, guys? It's Kami here, yeah? I know you probably ticked off with how happy I am, you know, starting this video, but like, who wouldn't be this happy when you got a lot of views and money off of this video? You know? It's like, guys, keep killing yourself, and uh, I'll be here watching, reacting, reading, because that's what scumbags do. Chase some clout. Doesn't matter how I get it, as long as I get it. You feel me, bruv? You feel me? This video is going to be quite serious, so if you guys do enjoy it, make sure you smash that thumbs up button. Because I'm here with Jacob, can we try and smash 5,000 thumbs up? Let's see if we can do it. 5,000, guys. 5,000 equals 5,000 people killing themselves, yeah? So, like, smash it. Smash it. So as you might know, I made a video about five months ago called Reading People's Suicide Notes. That video got a lot of attention and I actually got so many messages saying it helps so many people. <laughs> it helps so many people, AKA yourself. So today I am doing a part two of reading people's suicide notes. I thought I would bring one of my good friends in to help me with this video because it could get quite emotional. I don't want to be the only one crying on my own. Do you know what I mean? It makes sense. Hopefully none of you get offended by this video. If you do, please let me know down in the comments where I don't actually care. Like <laughs> oh my God. This guy's the fucking worst kind of human being to be friends with. Honestly, he's using sarcasm. Oh, I'm sarcastic, guys. Help me. Help me. Ah. You know, to mask him being a shitty person. That's how you escape responsibility for doing your shitty actions. Pull out the sarcasm card. Make it the other person's fault for not understanding your type of humor. You know, I'm sarcastic. I don't actually mean what I say. Like, it's your fault. Have you had anyone in your family commit suicide? Yeah, no, genuinely, I have, genuinely, yeah. Can you give anyone out there advice on, like, how to deal with that? Just talk to people, like, talk to your family, talk to your friends, like, see a counsellor, like, anything. I feel like, even if you don't have any friends, like, try and message, like, your favourite YouTuber, aka me. I read through my Instagram DMs when I'm sat in my bedroom alone, and I will try my best to reply to you. So if you want, you can follow me on Instagram and try and DM me if you are feeling sad. So we're gonna- <laughs> Oh my fucking god. 
Oh, yes! <sighs> We're two minutes in, and this guy asked for thumbs up, follow my friend's YouTube channel, and follow me on Instagram so I help you with your depression. Helping. This is what we call helping other people. So if you want to know how to be a charitable person like our friend here, this is how you do it, okay? Take some fucking notes, guys. Take some fucking notes. So the way he made this entire video is just so out of touch. He was talking so obnoxiously. The music wasn't even lining up to what he was saying. And this man, this fucking man, is incapable of doing any facial expressions. Like if I was reading something that sad, I'd at least be doing this. You know, a little stupid pouty face. You know, or squinting my eyes. At least pretending to have emotions. You know, but this fucking guy, this fucking guy's face is plastered. It's like he's a synthetic human who doesn't have emotions in his programming. I'm so cold, please do something. I can't stand this empty feeling that I'm having. My head is horrible. Stop the pounding, it hurts so much. I have no control over anything in my life. I'm breaking into pieces. Somebody do something. That's actually so sad. You just help me. I can't feel my fucking face. I know you think I'm weird, but... It's just Botox. Please help me. The devil made me do it, and the devil will make you do it too. See, like, what the actual frick is up with that? They're obviously in some, like, deep hole or something like that. That's honestly That's so... Imagine, like, actually killing yourself because the devil told you to do that. There is so much to, like, the earth that I don't understand about. Like, it makes no sense. I can't live with what I did to that little girl. You can find most of her body buried in the garden. Oh, my God. That is this legit? Yeah, obviously, these are all real. These are, these are real people's suicide notes, which is why it's messing with my mind so much. That's scary. I'm getting, like, shivers. Isn't it? There's real murderers like in the world. That's, the fact that's that people so actually murder people like that is messed so up. messed up. I hate that so much. It's like horror films, but like it's real life, and that's yeah. just so scary to me. In three minutes of watching this, I lost half of my fucking brain. It's like horror films, but like it's real life, and that's yeah. just so scary to me. Like literally, what's the point of horror films? To scare the fuck out of you, okay? And what are some horror films inspired by? Fucking real life shit. God. thinks I'm writing an actual suicide note, he is making me do this. What? Wow, what What's the, the frick? That's like in their head, someone's in their head. Oh, uh, stop, that's, that's actually scary. That's so, so scary. scary. It's like there's someone actually living in their head. Oh my god, who? Who's living in their head? Is it the devil? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I want to slap these two so much. You know, they lack sympathy you know they're fucking playing that sad music you know that fucking sad music is not gonna save you from your shitty personalities all right you said you're a bad person oh fuck yeah no shit duh it's good that you're self-aware about how bad of a person you are i just want to say that i'm sorry if anyone gets offended by my humor i'm a bad person but like it's fine you know you can tell they're so out of touch because in their little head in their perfect world in their perfect fucking bubble People don't kill themselves. People don't don't get sad, they don't get depressed. You know, it's only in the horror films where killing happens. Not in real life. Well, fuck you, bitch. They're so fucking obnoxious. The way they're talking about this, you know? They're, re they're not even fucking sympathizing even one bit. They're straight up roasting their suicide notes. So near the end, as he was reading one of the suicide notes, his brother actually walked out of the video because he was feeling too emotional. I will never stop grieving Bailey because I will never stop loving him. That's just how it is. Grief and love are conjoined. You don't get one without the other. What's wrong? Wait, is it? <laughs> Tell me how <I'm> <laughs> That's just how it is. Grief and love are conjoined. You don't get one without the other. All I can do is love him and the world. Emulate him by living. You know, and I just, I just gotta say, man, that's, that's, mm, that's, that's some Oscar level performance right there, man. I loved it. You know, oof. There is another thing that pissed me off. They ended this video with the same ignorance that they started with. You know, they were talking about these solutions to depression and suicide, like, you know, don't fucking kill yourself. It's not right. You know, it gets better. But how will you know if it gets better if you kill yourself? It's not worth it. Like, why would you, like, end your life over something that could get better, if you know what I mean? And if you think it doesn't get better, just honestly keep on waiting. Because how would you know if you kill yourself? You'll never know if things get better if you end your life. Honestly, just don't do it. Like, no fucking shit. No fucking shit. Nice analysis you got there, Kowalski. You thought of that yourself? I agree. I love you. Yeah, of course. It wouldn't be a complete 
emotional video that screams I want to help you without ending on a quote you know and rest in peace to Robin Williams by the way so another youtuber that goes by the name of Jack Mate actually made a video about this guy so this guy Jack Mate made a lot of valid points you know most of his criticism was pretty much on point and here's the good part touch the light response oh god damn you're gonna get wrecked man you're gonna get wrecked with facts and logic because that's what my boy Touch the Light is known for. And without further ado, let's react to some people's suicide notes. I just want to say, um, rest in peace to like everyone that's killed themselves. Uh, it's sad that you've done that. So flippant. Oh, it's sad that you've done that. Like I said, I'm literally 17 filming this video. Like I'm not. I don't know myself here. I don't. Li I literally know nothing. I mean, he's. Kind of right, because when I was 17, I didn't actually know that people, you know, had to have sex to have babies. You know, I didn't know what drugs were or what alcohol were. I didn't even know how to fucking read. You know, I was that ignorant. Okay, so after his young, dumb and broke excuse, he said that he didn't know any better before he met his friends. And then they taught him everything he needs to know and what was right and what's wrong and that all the shit he did in the past was bad that it needs to change the reason for me not knowing nothing is because i hadn't actually found my youtube friends that my youtube friends have taught me so much they've taught me everything that i literally need to know about life that we've all grown up together it's been like two and a half years now i don't mean to be rude or anything but like don't you have family for that and don't you also have like common sense to know what's right and wrong anyways these friends that he met they actually made a group they called themselves the social climbers. Now I started to respect him after I found out he made a group because he managed to get the entire cast of Ice Age to be part of this. So, respect. Oh yeah, that wasn't his full response by the way. Now if you wanna know how to perfectly dismantle your opponent with facts and logic, then this is how. Like you're literally a 27 year old man in your mom's shed. Like that's embarrassing. Like that's literally so embarrassing. I I feel for you. I really do. I'm in a massive mansion in central London right now, living with my three best friends that I met from YouTube, and you're in your mum's shed chatting shit about me. Like, do you guys not see a problem here? Because it's making me uncomfortable the fact that he also he has a fan base. Like it's like what? Like why are you supporting an old man making videos on other people in his mum's shed? It makes me uncomfortable. It really does. Oh my god. Fuck. Is this guy not the fucking worst person? Honestly, you're so fucking obnoxious. Like, oh, hi, Mighty. Like, I got money. I'm living in this mansion. And you're living in your mom's shed. Like, I live in my fucking closet. And I'm not complaining. Bitch. Yeah, I can tell you're rich by the amount of lip fillers you have. You know, why does this guy talk like he just had 50 lip injections? Kylie Jenner looking ass. Like, I understand why he's literally roasting me for doing these videos, but it's also like, why are you wasting your time doing that when I obviously didn't know any better? Like, I'm admitting that I didn't know any better. But like, trying to bring it back up in 2019 when this was filmed in like 2016 slash 2017 is a bit pathetic. Like, I'm not going through your old videos and trying to expose you. Like, I can't believe you have that much spare time. I'm bringing it back. I just can't believe that you literally are in your mum's shed freaking going through my videos and trying to expose me from a couple years ago. Does anyone not see that as so sad? I'm embarrassed. Like, I genuinely am embarrassed. I could never relate. Like, no freaking way. Yeah, you can't tell me what I did wrong. You can't criticize me for the things I did in the past because they're in the past. It's 2019. I don't do that shit anymore. Well, are you sure about that? Let me just bring up this little, little video here about his experience dating James Charles because, you know, like... It's in the past, I've changed, like, I'm a new person. <laughs> okay, dude. So, it's a 10-minute video of him basically saying nothing. So, if you're interested in seeing how a person can say so many words and mean nothing at the same time, then I suggest you watch this. <laughs> So after all this happens, I ended up speaking to him at the party, we got on really well, and then that's where things started to go awkward. He obviously kept, oh, I'm not gonna lie, like he kept asking me like really weird questions. He basically was hitting me with the questions being like, so um, how long have you been gay for? Like stuff like that. I'm not actually gay, so. You know, that's so weird because in this video, he talks about how if he didn't leave to London and stayed in LA, Something would have happened between him and James. But the way he worded it though, it's like he had no choice. You know, like James is fucking forcing him 
to stay at his house, you know, come over, hang out. Like, dude, you're not being kidnapped by fucking ISIS. It's just James Charles, a gay man asking you to hang out. You can say no, you know, no big deal. You know, you're not being held hostage. What the fuck are you talking about? The reason I never actually saw him again was because I stopped speaking to him after a while because I was like, this isn't for me. I don't want to feel like I'm leading someone on. And obviously I was back in London and he's back in LA. But I just knew if I ended up flying out, something would have happened between me and him, like for sure. Because I'm pretty sure I would have had to stay at his and I don't even want to think about it. It makes me so uncomfortable to think about and yeah, that's just not what I want to be doing. But then again, Totally not gay. Although, at the end of the video, he said that he was just sharing his experience dating James Charles. Yeah, all I can really say is everything I've been hearing about James and everyone opening up about it, like, it really does make sense to me. I don't know, I can't put it into words how I feel right now. I do just feel a bit shit. He was a friend or maybe something more than a friend. Like, I don't know. It's such an uncomfortable situation. And yeah, I guess that's it for the video. I just wanted to tell you guys my experience with dating him. I don't know if there was any need for this video, but like, why not? Like, why would I not like make a video on it? You feel? Wait, you're straight. How can a straight man be dating a gay man and be straight at the same time? Okay, so maybe he's bisexual. Right? Luckily for us, he made a follow-up video clarifying his gender. You know, hopefully this is the final nail on the coffin. Yeah. And it makes me kind of uncomfortable because in my last video, loads of people were like, so you're bi, you're bi, you're gay, you're gay, what? Where did I say I was gay or bi in that video? Like, I'm not being funny. The only thing I said was, how do I know if I'm not straight? Like, I've never done anything with a guy. Like, how will I know? Doesn't make me gay. Doesn't make me bi. I got uncomfortable in the situation. I was drunk. I literally have kissed guys before. Like, it's not deep. But anyway. <laughs> I'm so fucking confused right now, man. I swear, I feel like I'm the one having a gender crisis. There's also this one guy from his friend group, you know, Sid from Ice Age, who made a similar James Charles video. But in his version, James called him cute. So when he messaged me in 2017, he messaged me saying, you're very cute. And then he proceeded to talk about how he felt so powerless. This feeling of intimidation was the only thing I can grasp from it. You know, because James was this big YouTube monster. He was just this little 17 and a half year old. And James was this fucking pedophile 18 year old. So at the time, he was 18 and I was 17. Does that make sense? But how are you gonna message a 17 year old? Do you know what I mean? It is wrong, and personally a lot of people have been asking me on my opinion on the whole scenario, even if I'm not involved. And personally a lot of people have been asking me on my opinion on the whole scenario, even if I'm not involved. Even though all James did was compliment him, you know, my man felt violated. He felt disgusted out of himself. My man questioned his sexuality, his life. He had a fucking existential crisis right then and there because of James fucking Charles. Terrible human being. Fucking terrible. As far as I know, I am straight, okay? But when you have such a such a large influence in front of you in person giving off that vibe you kind of feel like you have to, like you have to the only reason i kind of went there was because of the power and the the pressure and the intimidation that i felt and it's just it's ridiculous but luckily nothing did happen it's just funny to think about because these two were so strongly standing by their word at being straight you know we're straight men you don't do that shit and yet they can't even act like a fucking man Grow a pair, my guy. Grow a pair. <laughs> I'm hurt, man. I'm hurting real bad. It's okay, though, because thumbs up and you'll save my life. I'm poor. <gasps> Wait, third world country kind of poor. Look at my face, I'm so very sad, man. <laughs> I'm going home now, guys. See you next time. <laughs> <laughs>